Today on Inside Utah Politics, Medicaid expansion in Utah. A bill replacing Proposition 3 was signed into law during the week. We're digging into the changes and what it means for those who fall into the coverage gap. And making a difference for homeless Utahns. We're going to introduce you to a nine-year-old boy who's going above and beyond to lift those in need. Time now for Inside Utah Politics. Good Sunday morning and thanks so much for joining us for Inside Utah Politics. I'm Glenn Mills. After a years long battle, Medicaid expansion will soon happen here in Utah. On Monday, the state legislature gave final approval to SB 96 to replace Proposition 3. A few hours later, the governor signed it into law. So here's how it will work. On April 1st, the state will implement partial expansion up to 100% of the federal poverty level. The state will pick up 30% of the cost and seek a waiver for a 90-10 split with the feds. If that does not come through by January 2020, it will expand to 138 of the FPL. The state will continue to seek waivers for things like enrollment caps and work requirements. If those don't come through, the plan will fall back to HB 210. That'll happen in July of 2020, which is Prop 3 with some smaller modifications. We turn now to Stacy Stanford, Health Policy Analyst with Utah Health Policy Project, and Randall Sir, Director of Take Care Utah. So glad both of you could join us for this important conversation we're about to have. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Stacy. I first met you probably five years ago up at the state cap capitol. You've been a tireless advocate for Medicaid expansion here in the state of Utah. So what are your thoughts now that we have finally reached some type of conclusion and moving on, even though it falls short of what you originally pushed for? You know, it's a lot of mixed emotions because it is disappointing that Prop 3 was kind of relegated to a backstop. But at the same time, you know, thinking about people who need the care right now, this is a step forward for those people that have been waiting for so long. So it really is, you know, mixed emotions between being disappointed, being concerned about some of the harmful elements, but looking toward the future and encouraged. Okay, we'll get to more of that in just a second, Randall. I want to bring you in for years, tens of thousands of Utahns have had no option for care. And the thing about it is these are the most vulnerable among us. Talk about those who fall into the coverage gap, who they are and the challenges they have faced to try to get to this point. Sure, so I manage a program, a nonprofit program of about 50 people across the state that help people sign up for health insurance. When the Affordable Care Act rolled out, everybody was excited. They thought they could have access to health insurance. About half of the calls that we took were people that fell into the Medicaid gap. They were hearing something was available and then we had to unfortunately explain to them that it wasn't. Uh, so these are people, working adults, uh, m a, lot of, a lot of childless adults and a lot of parents as well that are working but still are below the poverty level um, that are kind of stuck in limbo where they don't qualify for Obamacare, they don't qualify for the marketplace and they don't qualify for Medicaid. So, you know, regardless of all the politics around this and how it's paid for all those kinds of things at the end of the day these people are now going to have an option that's the good news we're going to get into let that sink in for a minute though this is very complicated to explain how we got to this point but people who live below the poverty level had no option for care so the good news is they do now mm -hmm. let's start though with those because this is a partial expansion first up to 100 percent of the federal poverty level so let's start with those uh, above 100 to 138 percent of the poverty level what does this expansion mean for them pretty much they stay where they are so as of you know today people between 100 and 138 percent currently are eligible on healthcare.gov marketplace exchanges and so nothing is really changing for them. Under Proposition 3 they would have been eligible for Medicaid and would have had the option to switch to the Medicaid program but for now you know nothing changes. And when you mention some of the things that you're uh, concerned about with the new law that's one of them. Those people there what are some of the potential downfalls that you're concerned about? You know, the individual market plans aren't free. So they do have uh, premiums and co-pays, which are low but can add up if you have healthcare needs. So 
you know, $30 a month isn't astronomical, but if you have 10 prescriptions and five doctor's appointments, that adds up really quickly. And when your income is that low, it can start to be unaffordable. Plus, there's only a 45-day sign-up period. So if you miss that window, you can't roll in constantly like you can into the Medicaid program. And, and that's something that rolls around every November, correct? Yeah. Just like most of us with uh, employer-based uh, programs. Uh, anything else on that before we move on? No. Okay. Randall, uh, now we're getting into the up to 100% of the federal poverty level. Again, those that fell into the coverage gap. So if they're sitting at home wondering what to do next, what do they do? What does this mean for them? So this means that starting April 1st, uh, they can now apply for Medicaid, okay? Which, in our conversations with the Department of Workforce Services, anybody can apply for Medicaid at any time However, the infrastructure, the system, uh, the program availability won't be available until April 1st. So what that means is the best thing someone can do for themselves if they, if they want to apply for Medicaid expansion is apply on April 1st or as soon as possible after April 1st. Um, and we offer a, a free help for people to do that. So yeah, I wanted to bring that up. How, how do people connect with you guys to help? navigate this because I'm sure it's a pretty complicated system. Sure, so it depends on where you live in the state. The simple way, the, the, well the important thing to know is we have people all across the state, whether you're in St. George, Logan, or anywhere in between. Uh, if you go to takecareutah.org, you can do a simple zip code search and find whoever's closest to you and get help that way. Um, if, you, if you don't have access to the internet or you prefer to talk to somebody, you can simply call 211 uh, and they'll tell you who's closest to you that you can get help from. Okay, Stacy, you once found yourself in that very position, in the coverage gap. Mm -hmm. uh, things have changed for you since then, but what does it mean to you to know that these people will finally be able to get covered under Medicaid? And, and having been in those shoes before, what does it mean for them? It's kind of indescribable. You know, I remember, the biggest thing I remember about being in the coverage gap is just feeling so desperate and feeling so afraid and just, worried about this someday that would never come and fighting so hard for it. And so knowing that right now there's people that can call and schedule a doctor's appointment for April 15th or something like that, that means the world to me. That's why we've been doing this and that that is everything. Okay, so we started off the segment kind of explaining how it will all break down. Uh, it's gonna start off on a 70-30 match. So the state will be picking up 30% while they seek a 90-10 match uh, to get down to 10%. What are your thoughts on that coming through? What have we seen across the country? Is that way ever going to come through from what you guys have seen? You know, it's, it's complicated. They're paying three times more to, you know, to cover fewer people and kind of betting on these waivers that they're really confident, but from the sources that we have and the people that we talk to nationally, we're not hearing the same thing. And we really think that, you know, come July 2020, we'll have a full Medicaid expansion because these waivers aren't going anywhere. If that is the case, how could that potentially change things? Obviously for those up to 138%. Well, you know, you'll see more people qualify, obviously. There's gonna be some people that get on the marketplace if they're from 100% or at poverty level or just above the poverty level, most people will find something I think that is attractive and that they can afford and that makes sense for them. But it's also contextual, right? There's, there's some people, we have two stories that I like to tell. There's a lady that came into our office with a brain tumor that for her $300 a month was something that she was ecstatic about because she needed that desperately and any alternative was in the thousands for her. We had another gentleman come in that qualified for a plan for $2 a month, um, and he decided that was too expensive based on his needs and based on his income. So, you know, there's a lot of plans that you can choose from. There's a, there's a wide spectrum of, of options that people have once they get on healthcare.gov and take a look around. So it depends. But, yeah, some people will turn away because the marketplace is not Medicaid. And then, again, in July 2020, if all else fails, we would go to Representative Ray Ward's HB 210, that was something you guys seemed to be behind. Yeah, we supported that bill, definitely. That was a, you know, a fiscally responsible way to expand fully. Okay, more to come on this story, but yeah. the big news again, those up to 100% are gonna find uh, coverage through Medicaid. Appreciate your expertise and uh, time this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. you Still to come, the legislature has made major changes to two of the three propositions approved by Utah voters. So what does that mean for the overall process? Our panel weighs in a little later. But first, a young man who is a real life superhero for homeless Utahns. 
You'll be inspired by this nine-year-old's dedication to lifting others.